Yeah, so I actually got into the industry um, through work. Um, so I started off my career, I studied political science in college. Um, and then I went to work in marketing. I became a marketing associate for Crystal Geyser Water Company in San Francisco. Um, so after college, I lived in San Francisco for five years. And in that role as a marketing associate, I was exposed to all areas of marketing. And I was really like interested and fascinated um, by the work that our PR agency did. And so it was kind of through that. And after that role is when I transitioned into, um, into PR. And I went, um, into B2B tech PR. Um, I don't know if it was the nature of being in Silicon Valley or like a lot of my friends were working in tech, um, but it was really interesting to me. It was really nerdy. Um, I love kind of breaking down like the complex topics in tech and B2B tech and, and kind of up leveling that messaging and that storytelling. Um, that's kind of what I loved about PR. And, and 10 years later, I'm still, still doing that. <laughs> I don't have an engineering background. So at first it was a lot of just information absorption. Um, whenever I worked at PR agency, so we handled multiple clients at a time. And every time you get onboarded to a new client, um, they send you all of this information, demos, white papers, um, YouTube videos, like anything and everything that kind of breaks down what the product does and how it helps um, their customers. And I would just, absorb all of that. I would watch it, I would read it. And then the next step into really understanding um, the technology is like, can you write about it? Can you explain it to someone else on the team? And so kind of going through that exercise, um, I was able to grasp the concepts of whatever technology the client had. Um, so again, like I said, I've always worked in B2B tech. So cybersecurity, um, big data, um, microservices, DevOps, DevSecOps. These are these are terms that I learned really early on um, and through the years as tech changes and as clients, you know, come and go, I've been able to kind of just build on that foundation. But it really did take um, work at the beginning to read through everything and and still to this day, if there's new product coming out, like talking to a product marketing team, talking to our sales team, um, making sure that I understand the value proposition um, so that I can talk about it to reporters. My first experience using data um, would be, so when I, when I made the switch over to working in PR and at a PR agency, I started from the bottom to really learn the ropes um, as I went. And so as a, I think it was called an account coordinator position, you're really in charge of kind of uh, searching through Google and news alerts for any mentions of the company. And uh, when you work at a PR agency, it's always been hard to quantify and justify your value because um, it is an expensive service. Um, and so I think that's the, that was my first introduction to data is like, okay, how can we use the data and the metrics that we set um, to prove our value? And so we did uh, coverage volume. And then we also went a step further and kind of did quality of the coverage. So right where we just mentioned in a list with all of our competitors, um, were we quoted? Was this a feature piece? Um, and so we also, that was, also data that we took and quantified and sent to our clients on a monthly basis. That along with share of voice, um, which is also a very inexact science, but nonetheless, we, we try to measure um, in comparison to our competitors and in the industry, how much are people talking about us? And is that sentiment positive or negative, right? Like people say any PR is good PR, but um, in the security and tech space, you don't want to be in the news for having, you know, any data breaches or privacy concerns. Um, so I think that was in terms of, of metrics and, and proving your value. That was my first experience in using data. Um, also, one of my very first clients was Cloudera um, and they did Hadoop and, and big data. Um, so I was also kind of exposed in that way of like, how can companies leverage their own data to provide value. Um.
My favorite campaign that I've worked on um, is at my current company at Cobalt. We do an annual state of pen testing report. And so we take all of our internal data from the pen tests that we conduct and we're able to analyze and break it down into, you know, what are the most common vulnerabilities that we find? Um, what are the most common um, fixes? How long does it take to remediate? Uh, th that kind of data. And then ever since I joined, we've paired it with an external survey of industry folks. And so it's just gotten that much meatier and interesting because we ask people who are, you know, in the trenches, uh, managing these pen tests and these security programs at different companies, you know, kind of what they value, um, the risks they're willing to take, because not everything is, you know, going to be able to be fixed at any given point. Um, and so this campaign, the state of pen testing report that we do um, from last year to this year that we did it, um, we were able to double uh, the impact in terms of results on the on the media side, um, some really great feature pieces and great conversations that we had with reporters just about um, the the state of of where the industry is. So that that campaign is one that I'm really proud of. In PR and comms, in my role, there are several things we measure. Uh, one of them is volume of coverage. Um, so that's a very straightforward data point. How many articles have we been mentioned in? How many articles have we been featured in? Um, the other one is share of voice. What's our share of voice against um, the competitor set we get grouped against versus the competitor set that we compare, that we benchmark ourselves against because we're disrupting traditional pen testing. So while we get grouped with crowdsourced security vendors, we're actually, we consider our biggest competitors this other set. Um, so we measure share of voice for both because we get included in both conversations. Um, so those are the security metrics that we look to the most. And then the third one would be, how do we, how are we performing on social media? Are, are people, our are folks, prospects engaging with the webinars we're promoting? Are people registering for the events? Um, and then probably the last one that I take into consideration, but I don't necessarily report um, to anyone beyond me, is um, how, how are the relationships that we have with reporters? Um, do we have a reporter, you know, that can give us feedback sometimes on the messaging that that we're taking out or on like the pitches, because a lot of time you're, you know, you reach out to a reporter, your pitch gets ignored. Um, but I really value the times when we can get feedback from the reporters. That to me is a really important data point of like, OK, we're a trusted brand enough that they are telling me, you know, like the story is not for me or the story is just not a good fit at the moment. Um, so I don't report that anywhere, but for me, that's a very important metric. If I had a magic wand, the one feature I think I would love is feedback. Um, a lot of times we internally work through messaging and work with people who are very similar to us, but how is it being received by our audience and by our prospects? And if I had a feature that could tell me, oh, this, you know, I'm not buying this. This makes no sense to me. Why would you say it this way? This is too complicated. There's just like feedback on, on our messaging. That to me would be so valuable. We are in a really interesting time right now in the tech world. And I think we're seeing a lot of layoffs, a lot of uncertainty in the economy, and sometimes comms jobs and marketing jobs are the first to go. That's where budgets are like are cut because there's not a straight line to revenue. I can't say this article got us this customer. There's no direct tie-in unless the customer was like, this was my reason to believe. Um, so I think that's the reason that a lot of times marketing and comms jobs are the first to go. But I think they're really important. And if a business values their brand and values the longevity of, of that brand, 
um, they will keep us around. Um, and it's our job to make everyone understand like a comms person can help you relay the message of layoffs internally and externally because sometimes it's not the fact that you're doing layoffs, but it's it's the why and making sure that you are being honest and transparent um, as best as you can. I think we're all seeing a lot of craziness um, on Twitter um, with their new, their new CEO and they don't have, you know, they notoriously cut PR and comms there and the stories have been going crazy. You don't know what to believe. Um, that brand is really suffering right now from not having someone to make recommendations on how to best do a lot of these things. And that, and that again is managing external communications, but also internally. Um, there's a lot that could be better. Um, so I think, I think, Yes, our industry in the next one to two years will will go through a reckoning, a reckoning. Um, but at the same time, maybe being dismissed now will show our value because it's like, no, we actually need these people. We need these people to help us tell our story and manage manage the crises that we're that we're living through.